Howdy, partners. Cheers. Hey, do I look smarter in these glasses? Whatever. I can hear you. I'll pray for you. I'll light a candle for you. Listen, you know what yard sales are for? Yard sales are a way for you to get the stuff that you thought you needed when you needed it but couldn't afford it. And then you, based on some memory or something, you come home with the same kind of junk. So, today's episode is about guitars. This is not my shop. And this is not my guitar. But, I want you to have a look at this guitar. How many guitars like this have you walked by at a yard sale? Got a chunk missing out of the, the headstock. A little scratched up. Top is starting to separate. How many of these have you walked by? Well, I'm going to mess you up today because once you know what this one is, I swear... There is going to be a run on yard sale guitars by people like y'all. So I want to introduce you to somebody. His name's Fred. Now, you loyal subscribers, yeah, the ones that have been watching my channel for more than eight days, this is going to be a treat for you because I've mentioned Fred before. But Fred's going to walk us through this guitar and show you some things. And you are going to be completely and utterly disamazed by the end of this program. Come on, Fred. Let's go. So, now you've heard that this is a garage sale guitar. I mean, obviously any guitar that you buy at a garage sale is a garage sale guitar. But this one's a little different than a lot of the garage sale guitars. Um... This one has a number of things that are really unique about it. But let's get into what you have to overlook. Um, the first thing you overlook is the fact that you can't pick up the guitar and play it in the car. But if you um, will take a look at all the good things, You see that it's uh, got mother of pearl around the edge and mother of pearl around the sound hole. And it's got an unusual headstock. It's got a slotted headstock. Cream soda. Now on the back of the headstock, it says C.F. Martin and Company, Nazareth, Pennsylvania. And that's an important thing because the guitars before they moved to Nazareth said C.F. Martin and Company, New York. And those before that, and I'll check this because I... I'm going off of memory. There was a point in time that just said C.F. Martin. But I may be wrong. We'll check all that. But if you look, it's very sweet. It's got ivory binding. And um, this one has been refinished. There's a number of things, but we'll get into that. But we'll figure out what it is. There's the mark I was talking about. You can see it. It's very faint. And the reason it's very faint um, is because this guitar has been refinished. Normally, it wouldn't be that faint because the stamp would have been put on uh, with the original finish, which was a French polish finish. It was a shellac finish or a varnish finish. So we're still figuring out we figured out what it is based on what's on the back of the headstock C.F. Martin and Company, Pennsylvania. We just check one other thing which is 
Embassy of Martin and Company, Pennsylvania, on that strip. Now, later on, we're going to notice some differences. We're going to notice that it doesn't say BA of Pennsylvania, it says New York. And we'll check out what it, what, if I was right about the ant company, which I don't think I am, but we'll find out. Good. Okay, so this is a 12 friend model. So, in other words, when we come up with these different names of the early guitars, they'll either be called a style so or a size. So if it's a style, um, which this is, we have to find out what kind of a style it is. Now, this is the original Martin book. And in the back of this book, I've got a acknowledgement along with George Gruen and a couple of other guys. Now, the difference between their acknowledgement of George Gruen and mine is they didn't spell my name right. So, but that's okay. Man of, uh, man of very small, I'm, I'm humble, I'm humble and gentle, I don't care. But I wish they had gotten it right. Anyway, so, yeah, let me, let me, uh, let me get it. A tool to measure. Diameter of the sound hole is going to tell us everything. Now we want to figure out what it is. We know it's a Martin, but what is it? What style is it? So we get out the Martin book or we get out the George Green book. And uh, it tells me that the uh, style double O is three and three quarters. So of the sound hole. So the smaller guitar, the smaller the sound off. So I've come up, while well, paging through the history book, I've come up with uh, one that's very much like it. Um, this, the inlays are a little, maybe a little different. We'll check on that. Yeah, they are. But then this is made by Martin, but it's got a Wurlitzer stamp and label. And Martin made guitars for Wurlitzer and uh, for Rand Randolph Wurlitzer. Uh, they made them between 1922 and 1924. And um, so you may at a garage sale find a guitar with a Wurlitzer stamp. That's even more rare than Divad had a Martin stamp. So, for instance, here is a 1940 uh, 0042, because that's what this is. How do we know it's a 42? Well, the difference between a 42 and a 45 is the 42 it just has the pearl around the top and the fingerboard, whereas the 45 would have a at a, every 90 degree edge, you know, back, top, you know, you name it. Now, here's a style a picture of a style 45, but it's a bad picture. The new Martin specification book would show it, which we should, uh, we could get into. By the way, this is really fun. Um, I met Gene Autry, and um, I had gone down to um, uh, Angel Stadium down in Orange County at the request of Johnny Rivers, which is a funny, funny story in and of itself. John was opening up the um, season. And he said, Fred, you know, I'm wondering if you could come down and help me because I've, they've told me I only have one mic line, but if I'm doing opening the uh, stadium, I want to do the um, 
you know, the patriotic song, but use my guitar as a backup, as a background, you know, play guitar and sing the national anthem. Can you figure out a way to do it? And I said, yeah, oh, easy. It's so easy. I'll use a sure portable preamp and I'll use a rock man and I will take your guitar, plug it in to the rock man and I'll go f uh, from the, the uh, sure preamp mixer I will go from the mic into the preamp mixer so I can mix the two signals, the rock man signal that is the Telecaster with effects and and it'll be good, yeah, don't worry about it, it'll be good. Well, I pull into his driveway and lo and behold I recognize that's Todd Fisher's car. Well, Todd Fisher is it is like we call him Todd Fisher the movie because he, besides being Debbie Reynolds' son and and uh, Carrie Fisher's brother, he's kind of just the most stable individual that is stable through anything that's going on between or with in the in any of their lives. He's just a wonderful guy, wise beyond his years. Uh, you know, he's filmed the Blue Angels off of the that that ramp from the one of those C one thirty twos. You know, I mean, the guy's he's fearless. Anyway, so here there's his car. So I'm thinking, geez, well, why would he be coming to see John kicked off kick off the the Angel game, the first Angel game of the season? So I go in, I, and now we're really close friends, and I say, Todd, what are you doing here? He says, oh, John, call me. See, he only has this one mic cord, and so he wanted me to, and I said, wait a minute. You are kidding me. He called me, too. I said, what did you bring? He said, well, I brought a sure mixer and a wrong one. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's exactly what I brought. I said, you know, Rivers is Italian. This is called in chess a Sicilian defense. He's backing up one man with another. I'm your backup man or your mind will never know. But this is funny. So anyway, we're in the car and Rivers is, keeps asking us if everything's going to be okay. So I just start having fun and I said, uh, hey Todd, do you remember shutting off the batteries to the Rockman after we tested it in there? And he picks up on it right away. He goes, no, I don't remember it, but I'm sure it'll be okay. Well, John's got to pull the car over. We got to check it. So, okay, we check it. We get back in the car. He says, you know, Fred, uh, did you happen to check because you, we were trying your preamp, your sure mixer. I mean, are you sure you turned off the batteries on that? And I said, "Well, God, crazy thing. I'm, you know, I'm sure I did. I mean, I probably did." Well, that shot pulls over again. We gotta check that. Okay, so anyway, we're just having fun. It's just like, you know, come on, it's three guys who are having fun. We're kidding each other. So we get out on the mound, and of course this is the first game, and you know, I don't know how many hundreds of people, thousands of people are looking at us, I don't know, maybe it's 80,000, I don't know. But we're out on the mound, and we're all ready to go. But we don't turn it on. Well, guess we're ready to go. We're, there's nothing to check. And River just says, well, you know, how's it going? We go, it's, it's probably going good, you know. Well, are you sure? Yeah, well, let's test it. I don't hear anything. Well, it's because we hadn't turned on the headphones. You know, we're just, we're just having fun. And, you know, because we're just three guys having fun, you know, kidding each other. Anyway, it all goes really well. But after the, after the thing, we met 
Gene Autry, who owns the team. And John had promised me, he said, you know, I'll make sure that I introduce you to Gene Autry. I said, oh, well, that would be just wonderful if I, you know, you'd do that for me. I would love that. So the minute I meet Gene Autry, I said, man, Ed Martin, you have the 45. That's a mind-boggling instrument. He goes, you like my guitar? I said, well, I love your guitar. Everybody loves that guitar. It's very unusual guitar because it's not necessarily a normal 45. Um, it's actually got more of a show slope shoulder to it. Anyway, so he says, "Wow, well, I'm I'm so amazed that you you know that guitar." And so, anyway, to make a long story short, the next day. I had a camera. I said, could I take a picture of us? He says, of course. So I put it up on the, we're in the dugout now. I put it up on the side of the dugout. He goes, Fred, this is a lousy picture in the dugout. It's just a cement wall. Let's go back to the, to the dress, you know, to the team room, you know, the locker room. Bless his heart, man. He was an elderly guy in here. And we go shuffling back. Anyway, the next day he sends me pictures of, that he had taken with me. It was so sweet. And I've got I've got those pictures around here. We can, I can show you. Oh boy! Yeah. Okay. What were we doing here? Oh yeah, the yard sale guitar. Okay. So here's the deal. Remember, we we hypothetically got this at a garage sale. So what's going on with this? Well, what was going on with this? is that part was broken. It was a piece of wood that popped out, actually. I should have gotten a picture on my phone of it popped out. You can still see a remnant of where it was there, and we'll go over how we fix that and make it go away. Remember that this guitar has been refinished. So, and you can see I've got a couple of little white things there. And a white line there. So how do we get rid of it? Well, I've got all sorts of, there's two types of things. There's stains, enamel, and dyes. Anyway, what I'll do is let me try it and see what I can do with my watercolors. All right, so I'm mixing up. This is not my really cool watercolors set. This is my kind of cool watercolor. Well, it's not even this. My, I can't find my other one in this messy shop. I go here and look. Anyway, let me see if I can get rid of that white. I got rid of the white. Well, that was drawing for that watercolor thing. Um, we've got to clean up the guitar. Now, believe it or not, like, if, come on in close and let's see if we can show a couple of things here. See that mark there? See it? Can you see it? Kind of like a little circle. And there's something there, and there's something there, and something there. Well, before we use any chemicals, spit is a unbelievable cleaner. So we try spit first, and your finger, depending on how callous your hand is, is a grade of sandpaper. I could use spit for the other thing, but I'm going to use a polish that my grandfather made post-COVID. 
you can't get denatured alcohol. And even if you could, about three years earlier than COVID, they, the EPA people made the ingredients of denatured alcohol get changed. So where you get real, real alcohol like you do woodwork with is by buying Everclear. So anyway, here's my secret polish. But part of it is Everclear. And what the Everclear does on a really beautiful violin or on a guitar that's got a French polish or varnish finish. This, remember, has been refinished. So it's kind of impervious to um, a lot of the things that uh, normal uh, polishes or chemicals might hurt. Okay, so you can probably see here it's it's a little nicer than it is down here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, yeah, but look, just kind of go with me and know that the camera can't get out clean the guitars. But the cloth is good. So anyway, that's some initial dirt. Now when I initial dirt. Now when I did Chris Christopherson's D18, he had it for a million years, and um, I went through two rolls of paper towels, getting the uh, well the time off of his guitar, you know, in other words, he had had this guitar for 40 years, he had, he had, he had on this D18, he has Odessa, Odessa's signature, he's got Dylan's, he's got everybody's signature on this guitar, you name it, he's got it, and um, he is, um, uh, Man Friday wanted it uh, taken care of and cleaned. And I went through two rolls of paper towels because it was always in smoky rooms, smoky clubs, smoky studios. And I mean, it was, you know, nicotine, y'all. But anyway. You can see, I mean, that's, you know, we're getting made, you know, dirt. And all the good guys use paper towels. And when we buy paper towels, we buy them based on their grit. We don't just buy paper towels. We take a look and see what kind. Like, there's certain paper towels that you use for polishing out a uh, lacquer that's been fine sanded. Now that's the other side of the cloth, right? So that's all new dirt. I can keep doing this and I would still keep it getting dirt. We'll stop here because we got to, you know, we can come back to cleaning it. Okay, so here's the deal. There's another one of those things. I think we should try spit first again. We've already tried the magic polish. No, no, wait a minute, yep, nope, okay, here we go, hold on.
Well, that was a combination of the spit and the matching polish. Okay, what this is, it's a piece of cotton that you get at the, you know, you know the drugstore. And you get a roll of cotton, you don't buy cotton balls. And you put it into a part of a wool sock. And then you put it on a, a piece of washed uh, linen. If you go to a good will place, you know, you get that, you know. So, it looks like that. Cotton wool sock linen. linen, you, you know, is you get really washed linen at the Goodwill, you do buying napkins. What I'm doing is I'm laying down a very thin layer of shellac. And uh, it's going to look pretty cool pretty soon. Notice that I don't start in one direction and then turn around. I do circles and figure eights. So there is no beginning and no end. I don't need a land to land on the top. I need to kind of touch and go. And as you're watching, you're seeing it all of a sudden look a lot different. And shellac is, you know, dropping of the lac bug. But you can also buy uh, shellac that other people have made. There's a company, there's a lot of different companies. Actually, Mohawk makes what they call a padding shellac. And it's very good. Otherwise, you have to centrifuge shellac. So what we've done, there you go, we've made a, we put a thin coat on it using the technique they call this French polishing. Now it's got a different kind of a look, doesn't it? We kind of want to bring the guitar into its former self. What happened over the years is somebody had a great idea. They decided since this guitar was originally braced for nylon string, we're going to check and make sure that's true, but um, what they would do is they would put a set of pegs on it that uh, is for nylon. The difference between a nylon string uh, set of machine ads and a steel set of machine ads is the size of the uh, shaft now with the nylon string you know the, the, the shafts and gears have a lot to do with what the ratio is between when you tune a peg So this is, you know, a very small bag, so it, I don't know, you kind of, we'll figure it out. I'm not great at physics, but it was going to go at a different gear ratio than a wide bag. So this, by the way, is not just a normal set of nylon string bags. This is called a nylon for bag that a Herman Hauser used to use. So if you own a Herman Hauser and your bag has worn out, I have Lonsdorfer bags. So let's see. See the way this is going to fit into that hole? Fits 
too tight. It obviously wasn't a Lonsdorfer bag. It was, you know, an American or Japanese or some kind of bag. What we want to do is fill out all so that we can put this in its place. Mm -hmm. So I have here uh, cherry flathead plugs. Uh, they didn't have mahogany. And if I, if anybody would notice the difference, I would have made my own mahogany plugs. But nobody would know the difference, so I didn't. Now, what I've learned I can never talk when I'm having using two hands, so forgive me. But what I've learned is this plug may not go all the way in without me knocking a little bit off. It will go for some reason in this side. But it still leaves some. But I'm going to do it from this side because this side's going to get covered by the bag plate itself. And I'm not going to push it in that much. It's uh, it's on a uh, very slight taper. And I don't want to challenge the surrounding framework of that because it'll crack. So we've caught up on filling these, the plugging these holes for the fuller, the smaller diameter bag. Now we're just going to put in the last one. Okay, so when I'm wiping glue off, I can use a number of things, but the really, to do it right, you use a brush and a little water. It gets in places that a paper towel can't get in. George Gruen's book, and I'm looking up the serial number. It'll be the serial number you can find online, etc., but, you know, George... Did a good job on the book, by his book. Okay, so, it's uh, definitely by the serial number. Now, I'm looking up, where did I find that serial Where did I find that serial number? I found it by looking at the inside of the neck block. Okay, this is the book telling me it's a 1923 42, 42 by, by the 42 and the long edge. Now, we can talk more about the authenticity of the guitar. We know it's been refinished. The Pyramid Bridge is not uh, original. And, uh, I can uh, show you what an original pyramid bridge is like. Okay, so the, this bridge is definitely not original. This is typical. We call these pyramid bridges. That's not a pyramid. But it's a lot easier to do a bridge that way than it is this way. But that has a sweet look about it, doesn't it? And I took this off a guitar. Some guy had decided to repair his guitar with epoxy. And he put a big glum of epoxy there. I don't know what the heck he was thinking, but anyway.
You know, the way you deal with this, eh? It's not open. I look inside and see what the deal is, but it's not open. And what we're seeing there is we're seeing where the lacquer has uh, cracked along there. I'll take, I'll take out that lacquer. But in the meantime, I'm going to run it over with very light sandpaper. See, it looks better already. Okay, so we have been calling this a yard sale guitar, which, you know, yeah, I've seen unbelievable guitars come out of a yard sale. You know, the elderly people die. Uh, they may have been the original owners, or they handed it down. Back in the old days, you only had books and uh, music. You know, obviously radio came along later, but people traded these things like you know, sacred vessels. Now, the, the, the original frets on this were, were different than this. This, this has been refretted. Normally it would have like a, a bar fret in there. This is a modern fret. And the guy thought he was doing a good thing by bringing the fret over the ivory thing, and it's fine. But anyway, this is with, with, via the book. We know a number of things. We know it's been refinished. It's been refretted. We're going to find the original type pegs for it. But in the meantime, what do we know? We know it's a 1923 0042. There's our 42 binding. We know that it has a non original bridge, it doesn't have the pyramid bridge. And later on, I'll go inside and see if this has been repaired really well. Uh, I've been able to... Uh, the, the lacquer was fractured up here where the crack is. And the light was picking it up, making it look really bad. You know, by the way, uh, senior moment. I forgot a really fun thing about this guitar. In 1923, they only made six of these models. So, well, I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, do you think this thing is rare? And, you know, there's a lot of things that, I, that offset its value. Um, number one, not original finish. Not original frets. Non original bridge. Uh, crack in the top, but next week I'll tell you who owns it, and it'll blow your mind, and I swear to God it's the truth. Far from a garage find. You know what? I knew this was not a yard sale guitar before the episode even started, but had I let you know what was really going on, you ought to have been too busy coveting, coveting way early. Now, let's just... Let's, let's think this out, people. What if you would have died before you started cover, coveting this guitar? It would have been okay for you. I'm talking about your eternal salvation, son. That's what I'm here for, eternal salvation. But I am not a Catholic priest. I cannot absolve you of your innumerous sins. Anyway, wasn't that awesome? You know it was. That's why you're here. That's why my channel exists, Complete Awesomeness. I'm going to get back out here and get some more of this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what? That, that spit thing Fred told you about, I guarantee you that to be true because, yeah, it worked on the grandma spit, spit in your hand and fix your, your Elvis flip. This doesn't just happen. Hey, give me a subscribe and like my channel because... How else will you be notified that Fred's going to come back on my show?
Are you psychic? Yeah. Okay, see you next time.